once you have ROIC, you can take the next step and calculate, you know, maybe try to estimate a future growth rate based on what the ROIC is. Now, there's a ton of caveats to that kind of idea. So I want to talk through some of those. Um, ROIC, you got, have to remember, it's, it's a backwards looking metric. And so obviously what has happened in the past is not guaranteed to happen in the future. And so we have to remember that first off, but you know, it can be a good way to kind of check your optimism. If, if you're assuming a huge growth rate and a company's ROIC does not seem to allow for that, then you are probably making some super optimistic assumptions. And so by doing an ROIC calculation, that can at least become more clear to you. Not to say that you're wrong to be super optimistic about the future of a company, but at least by doing the numbers, you are making it obvious to yourself that, okay, um, I'm, I'm making the risk that, that, that this is what I'm going to estimate. So let's go back to the, we're going to go to cash flow statement now, but this is something from Mobison, um, kind of just talking about the basics of the mathematics your maximum growth rate, assuming everything stays the same. So that means your ROIC stays the same year to year. Um, the the uh, dividends and buybacks or the payout ratio is going to be the same next year as it, is, as it was last year. So that's kind of some of the assumptions that are baked into a very sh easy shortcut formula like this. Um, but again, it can be helpful because it's like, all right, if I'm way optimistic compared to what this number is telling me, then you know maybe I'm delusional. And that's, we all get delusional, so don't feel bad, but that's, at least you can become aware of it. So in this case, because the ROIC for Costco is so high, 28%, the payout ratio is pretty low, 32. Um, we can say based on their current level of dividends, if they want to maintain the same buybacks, they could do a growth rate of 19% into the future. Now, again, that comes with a huge number of caveats. There's ways for ROIC in the future to be different than the ROIC that was in the past. Things like margin improvements. They could simply have a more profitable unit concept that's just a higher level of capital efficiency than what they've had in the past. Margins could contract, and that could make your return on invested capital in the future go lower. So lots of factors that can make this number end up differently. They could obviously finance and um, fund their growth through debt or equity. Those are all things that can happen, but um, it is a useful thing to, to try to do and kind of check yourself. And so lots I could say about the topic, but I'm just going to leave it there. Have fun. Um, Good luck, dive through the financials, and I'll talk to you next time. Peace.